In this video, we'll go over how to represent an infinite solution set with free variables. We know that when we solve a linear system, there are a few possibilities. We could have a unique solution, like we see here in this row echelon form matrix. There are ones across the diagonals, and we're able to get a unique solution for each variable by just doing a little bit of algebra. Each column has a leading one, and so is what we would call a pivot column, and so none of the variables are free. They all have an assigned value. x3 is equal to 2, and then we plug that into the above equation to solve for x2, and plug those into the top equation to solve for x1. It's also possible we get no solutions. In this example, we have a row of zeros with a 5 on the right. So 0x1 plus 0x2 plus 0x3 must equal 5. So 0 must equal 5. So this is an inconsistent system. There's no solution. But here's what it looks like when there are infinitely many solutions. So we'll just suppose that the augmented matrix for a linear system has been reduced by row operations to this echelon form. We'll do an example where we do the reducing in a minute, but let's just look at how to take this system and represent the infinite set of solutions. This matrix has two leading ones, and so has two pivot columns. The variables represented by these columns, x1 and x3, will be leading variables once we write out the equations, and we'll solve for them, so they are not free variables. Column 2, on the other hand, is not a pivot column. It doesn't contain a leading one, so the variable it represents, x2, is a free variable. In this situation, we have more variables than we have equations. We might have started with three equations, but in the process of row reduction, the third equation was completely eliminated. So we have three variables and two equations. The second equation tells us that x3 must equal 2. The first equation tells us that x1 plus 3x2 plus 2x3 must equal negative 4. Substituting the known value for x3 into that equation, we find that x1 plus 3x2 plus 4 must equal negative 4. Since x1 is the leading variable, it was the variable in that pivot column, we're going to solve this equation for x1. Moving everything else to the right, we get that x1 equals negative 4 minus 4 minus 3x2. Thus, x1 equals negative 3x2 minus 8. So we see that x3 must be 2, and x1 must be negative 3x2 minus 8. x2 is a free variable. It can be whatever it likes, and the value of x1 will depend on that. We can then use parameters to describe the entire solution set. Letting x2, the free variable, equal a parameter, say t, we have the general solution x1 equals negative 3t minus 8, x2 equals t, and x3 equals 2. By letting t vary over all the real numbers, we could describe every one of the infinitely many solutions to this system. And again, we knew from the reduced matrix that x2 would be a free variable because its column was not a pivot column. Its column doesn't contain a leading one. Let's do another example where we have to reduce the matrix ourselves. So here's the system. We have two equations and four variables. This happens to be what we call a homogeneous system because the constants on the right are all zero. Here's what it looks like once we set up the augmented matrix for the system and then proceed with row operations until we get it in row echelon form. All of our coefficients from the first equation are in row one and the coefficients from the second equation are in row two. The first step we perform is to multiply row one by one third to turn that leading entry into a one. Then we subtract five copies of row one from row two to introduce a zero below the leading one. That gets us here. Next, we multiply row two by negative three eighths to turn this leading entry into a one. That gets us here. Finally, we subtract one third of row two from row one in order to introduce a zero above that one. And now we are in reduced row echelon form. And again, we can look at this matrix and see that columns one and two are pivot columns. They contain pivots, the leading ones, but columns three and four are not. Thus, the variables represented by columns three and four, x3 and x4, will be free variables. This is the equation of row one, 
This is the equation from row 2. We'll solve each of these equations for the leading entry, x1 and x2. Solving the first equation for the leading variable, we get that x1 equals negative 1 fourth x3. Solving the second equation for the leading variable, we get that x2 equals negative 1 fourth x3 minus x4. Now we can parameterize and express the solution set. So we assign arbitrary parameters to our free variables, say x3 equals r and x4 equals s. Then we have the general solution that x1 equals negative 1 fourth r, x2 equals negative 1 fourth r minus s, x3 equals r, and x4 equals s. By letting r and s vary independently over all real numbers, we get the entire solution set. Here's one more example to try on your own. Again, we'll suppose that the augmented matrix for our linear system has been reduced by row operations to this echelon form. So use this to solve the system. Express the infinite solution set by parameterizing the free variables. Again, we may begin by noting that column one Column 3 and column 4 are all pivot columns. They contain the pivots, the leading ones. And so the variables represented by the other columns, that is x2 and x5, are going to be our free variables. Setting up the equations, we have from row 1 that x1 minus 4x2 plus 2x5 equals 3. From row 2, we have that x3 plus 4x5 equals 6. And from row 3, we have that x4 plus 3x5 equals negative 5. We'll solve each equation for the leading variable. Solving equation 3 for x4, we have that x4 equals negative 5 minus 3x5. Solving this equation for x3, we have that x3 equals 6 minus 4x5. Solving this equation for x1, we have that x1 equals 3 plus 4x2 minus 2x5. Now we can assign parameters to the free variables, x5 and x2, and then express the solution set. So assigning parameters to our free variables, say we let x2 equal s and x5 equal t, we have the general solution, x1 equals 3 plus 4s minus 2t, x2 equals s, x3 equals 6 minus 4t, x4 equals negative 5 minus 3t, and x5 equals t. In this last step, we're just taking these equations, replacing those free variables with their assigned parameters, and there you go. By letting s and t vary independently over the real numbers, we get all of these solutions to the system. So that's how you represent an infinite solution set by parameterizing the free variables. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and be sure to check out my linear algebra course and linear algebra exercises playlists in the description for more. Thanks for watching. Uh, uh, I'm the mathematical menace, the machinations of mankind, two calculators at the same time, hand signs and abacus, finger count and calculus, I'm the V to the T, my parameter, the rapidest, happens like this, my lectures, the most prominent, dominant, call me the Morgan, I get the compliments, the union in together, like any time that we intersect, cause my opponents know they need